Yeah. Um, but Caleb, why don't you, yeah, like give us a little background. Uh, maybe tell us what you're majoring in. Um, okay. School and maybe kind of how you got into photography. Uh, Cause yeah. You know, everything. Uh, um, so start off, uh, my name's Caleb Nelson. Uh, I go by Caleb Visuals on all social media. Um, I am currently 20 years old. That surprises a lot of people. Um, yeah. I was, <laughs> a lot thinking, of people. I, I was thinking a little bit older, but okay, cool. Yeah, a lot of pe- I can't even drink yet. <laughs> yeah. uh, a lot of people assume I'm at least 22 with the beer, but um, yeah, I'm 20 years old. Um, I am born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I uh, am currently going to the University of Memphis. I'm a second year uh, sophomore. And uh, my degree is uh, fine arts and communication with a minor in business. And um, fine, arts and, uh, fine arts is more like, you know, like focus on photography and video stuff. Um, really, is it, is it worth it to go to college for that? As of now, I'm saying no, because um, I'm getting... Um, all this work uh, and job opportunities because of my portfolio, not because of a piece of paper that college has given me. Um, but there's definitely some things you need to go to college for, for certain jobs for sure. But um, so I'm 20 years old. So I've been, I've been messing with cameras since 2011, um, since oh, wow. I was 11. Um, really started off with my grandparents having an old Sony camcorder uh, that, you know, you got to put the, the cassette tape in and all that stuff and yeah. uh, records to it and all that stuff. And um, old school, it was just, yeah, the old school, <laughs> I guess just me and my, uh, me and my sister was just playing around with it. You know, we would mess around like, um, like act like we're on like a, like a news anchor or something and, you know, just mess around with it. And, um, it kind of introduced me into, you know, cameras, but also just like technology in general. Like I was so fascinated by it. And, um, I really started, had a passion for like computers. So like, you know, this computer and stuff is all built by myself. And, um, and so I just started, it, um, started, uh, to like find a passion for technology. And it wasn't until, um, probably like 2013, I made a YouTube channel and started recording video games, Um, you know, playing uh, like Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops 2, all those classic Call of Duties. Best Call of Duty games ever, dude. The best Call of Duty games. Hands down. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, I was just recording, uh, recording like gameplay and stuff and uploading it on YouTube. And um, I kind of, I don't know, I kind of wanted to, like it kind of introduced me to like making content, but I wanted to make, uh, I don't know, like realer content, like more real life type of content, IRL stuff. And okay. I don't know, I kind of didn't want to be like known for the the guy that just sits down and plays games all day and, you know, records them, which nothing wrong with that. Obviously yeah. people are making millions from it mm-hmm. right now, but, um, but so, uh, wasn't it probably the same year, 2015, I got, uh, very first camera was a uh, GoPro Hero Three, and uh, okay. and I I strictly strictly just used it for video. It was wasn't even taking pictures back then. Um, I was just recording me and my friends like doing trampoline, like wrestling on trampolines, uh, riding full wheelers, all that all that good stuff. Um, and then it wasn't until uh, Christmas of 2016, I got my first uh, camera, my first DSLR, which was a uh, Canon Rebel T5, which I recommend for anyone who wants to get started with cameras to get that camera, to get a Canon Rebel series in general, because they're like the affordable beginner cameras that help, that will introduce you to like the high end stuff. And um, <clears throat> so I got that camera um, and just started. Uh, are doing videos with it still not even taking pictures yet um and it wasn't till uh later uh so i got that camera 20 christmas of 2015 so it wasn't later till 2016 
I um, started taking pictures just <clears throat> just to post on my Instagram, like, you know, hey, I have a new video, swipe up, like a thumbnail type of thing. Mm-hmm. And um, I was starting to realize it was, a, it was a lot easier and less time consuming to take pictures and edit them than to take videos and have to sit in your computer and edit them. I was able to like pump out content a lot faster with photos. So I was like, like, huh, maybe, uh, maybe I'll, uh, you know, try photographers photography thing out. And I always wanted to, my goal to strive for was, um, to have like an edgy aesthetic. I really like that aesthetic to be edgy and kind of moody. Um, so what do you exactly mean by that? If you don't mind me asking, if you a al- if you could elaborate a little yeah, bit more, that edge. Like, I don't know, like um, like dark tones, like moody tones yeah. in the pictures, like you know, like like you see you see a wedding, and it's all happy. I want totally opposite, you know. I got gotcha. you. Uh, That's cool. I want. Uh, it's kind of like uh, you're, you're used you know, to really like. I don't know. It draws. It's got such a nice, like, I feel like contrast, even like within the, like each individual photo almost like there's, yeah. I like that too. I like, I, I kind of get where you're going. Yeah. Like, it, it's just something that like, it was just so like visually pleasing to me. Like I really wanted to, to roll with that. And it was something that see in, in Memphis, there's a lot of like Memphis is a very um, artsy city, you know, we're known for like the blues. Like there's a lot of music people here. But also there's a lot of just like art, art stuff, art majors, stuff like that. So there's a lot of photographers here and um, a lot of them are like, um, like uh, portrait photographers, you know, you know, you get like the senior pictures or like they put you on a staircase and take normal pictures. And I just totally just wanted to make my portrait stand out. And so by being, being moody uh, helped a lot, but also like, Recently, I incorporate a lot, a lot of masks in my photography and um, just like I always, I always have the subject doing something uh, differently. And uh, you want to say something, Kyle? Um, yeah, well, no, I was actually because I got your Instagram page up on a separate tab here. Yeah. Um, and I was just kind of curious, like. I, I really dig your style, too, like you've got just such a variety and like the whole edginess like I said I feel like it's really covered in pretty much the majority of your photographs I was curious if you had like any specific inspiration because I know I think I messaged you before about like some of the techniques I know like I know know you probably don't want to give away like all your secrets and everything (laughs) Um, but I'm just looking here like there's a lot of cool little things that you're doing to get the effect that you do and I don't know if you do any sort of like composite editing like I think maybe the one with the vehicles floating if I remember correct yeah yeah um I don't know if you have any little like yeah things that people might be interested in if they're trying to get into photography too and have yeah um so like every single photo on my Instagram except one which was posted uh like a long time ago, every photo is taken, but taken by me and then, you know, edited by me in Photoshop, whether it's adding a new sky, floating cars, stuff like that. So I, I always make sure to have like my own taste in it or my own spin into it. Um, inspiration wise, um, really, um, biggest inspiration on Instagram is this guy named, uh, 19 tones. Uh, he is, he he's not from America, I know that, but he's um I think he's based I think he right now he's in Russia, but he's like he's actually like born in China. So he um he's not around here, but he does a lot of edgy moody stuff and um but really the biggest inspiration is um is Pinterest for me. Uh okay. Pinterest is somewhere where you can uh get a lot of ideas from and obviously and this other people's Instagrams, like for photography or just for art in general, you know, you should be able to, you know, bounce off of other people's ideas and 100%. not copy it, not copy it hundred percent, you know, as your little spin to it, mm-hmm. but, you know, find inspiration and in other people's posts and stuff. I agree. Like a 
a hundred, you know, a hundred percent for that. Cause I feel like as an artist, like your, your inspiration, whether you realize it or not, like sometimes it takes, you know, you might be finished the project for months and then you finally realize where you originally got that inspiration from, but it's yeah. ultimately going to be either pulled from like life going on around you or other artists that you are a fan of or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So yeah, yeah for sure and like so like pinterest and then like even even music you know um like music kind of puts me in like um it's not like it's like a mood where i'm like you know oh like <clears throat> like this picture would look cool for like this song or even like an album cover for this yeah. song or something you know I'm always and then oh, and then um what else just you know i you know i have i have friends who are who are creative in their own ways and stuff like that and just just sit down and brainstorming too you know it's just um just what happens and like um like recently like the mask photos that i've posted you know i literally was on just etsy uh and uh was just trying to i literally just typed in futuristic masks and was just trying to find something and i came across this shop um which uh can't remember how it what the name it's like Crypt, krypton is the uh etsy shop and um they specialize in the type of mask and um it uh it really uh you know opened up my eyes to just a whole bunch of new ideas they're sending me new masks uh for free actually thank god because they are pretty expensive um i was able to work out a deal with them and um but we can get into that later uh still introducing myself i guess <laughs> we're kind of getting off topic it's uh, all good keep it going i'm enjoying this i'll tell you that <laughs> but um but yeah so uh 2016 started taking pictures probably well, they didn't really start taking it seriously until 2018 i wanted it to uh wanted to actually make it a business or um like a way you know for me just to have income and um you know it, it's, it's kind of slow with photo shoots um the the thing is is when people when people see my instagram they don't really want photos from me because they want like senior pictures or maybe yeah. someone getting married you know and my instagram yeah. is very opposite of that um nine or like eight out of ten times um the models that are on my Instagram are from me reaching out to them and saying, Hey, I have this idea. You want to make it happen? And most of the time they're always like, heck yeah, let's do it. Um, I do do a lot of photo shoots now um, where it's like senior pictures. I, I shoot a lot of weddings now, but I never post that stuff. Cause it, you know, it just ruins the, just ruined the mood or the um, theme of my Instagram. But I'm thinking about making a second Instagram just, you know, for that, the happy stuff. But, um, would, but you yeah, enjoy, I would, would you enjoy that? Like, I know you were saying like how you really like the other kind of theme that's on your Instagram now, but would you still do that as far as like potential more business for you, even though it's something that maybe you're not super, super passionate about, but still kind of in the yeah, same category so, as photography and et cetera. So kind of how the, how the plan is, um, is uh so most of my income is from um like senior pictures uh family photos okay. uh and weddings uh weddings is uh weddings is the big the big thing um and uh i do uh i do video and photos for weddings and um and so um that is where like 90% of my income comes. Wow. And so that's like the business side. Yeah. So if I can, if I can get like all that the business side handled and the income handled, then I'm able to be free with the fun, creative stuff and yeah. um, not have to worry about charging people or finding, you know, people. And um, so that's, you know, I want to be able to be like, be creative and free, not to worry about money uh, and just ask, anybody to be in my photos and have fun with it but then i'm still able to make income and live off of the weddings and all that stuff cool. so that's kind of the plan but i think yeah. that's a good approach i've talked to like because um 
when I like, I mean, I'm still trying to figure everything out with like my design stuff and illustrations, all that kind of stuff. And I've had a couple like more established designers kind of advise mm-hmm. me to do something similar where it's like, you know, cause I have kind of a oddball style with my like illustrative sort of look. And they mm-hmm. were kind of suggesting to me to like, you know, focus on being able to do like, you know, a little bit of, everything to an extent as far as like the designs that like it's going to appeal more to either a business or somebody who's looking for a logo for their startup or whatever yeah um so i think that's good advice but i also i'm still like i always like kind of i like to like be stubborn to an extent and just keep like i guess dreaming to some degree like hoping you know just eventually maybe run into the right person and like would you do you think you would completely maybe shy away from those sort of shoots like the weddings and the port like that kind of stuff if you like stumbled in, into the right like path or setting or circumstance where like you got a really great deal and you know you could do the stuff that you're like more passionate about and make that oh yeah 100 like, percent. so i mean i feel like you're really your your opportunities have got to be clear like i think like with the following that you've gained on TikTok and Instagram and like you keep mm-hmm. doing it, man, like I think eventually, you know, some company is going to hit you up for a shoot for something or, you know, whatever. Yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's, you know, you know that's the goal. And like, yeah. like actually right now it's kind of the opposite, which is totally fine. Um, for wedding, um, this, this big wedding company hit me up and, um, okay but i mean but you know like you know it's it's still like you know as long as i get to work with cameras you know right. i'm good um that could be a stepping stone like yeah that. you know and it's just you know like especially like with like art stuff in general but photography it's all about just networking just you know like i'm going to this uh this other job opportunity for weddings but it's just going to open more doors you know who knows so um so yeah so i just got this job opportunity uh with these big wedding photographers they're like the biggest in memphis uh <clears throat> her name is john and kelly um photography and um or kelly's photography and um they do just photography but they want to add like a video team onto their uh Gotcha. to their business so they asked me to join to be the lead videographer and um they're hoping that'll be like a you know obviously COVID-19 is kind of jacking everything up but um they're hoping um by like 2021 it'd be like a full-time gig or uh you know even by 2022 so right now it's kind of like a part-time thing um but you know it's not you know I'm not you know I'm just sit, sitting back and going with the flow so yeah um, taking it where it leads you yeah so you know i you know i'm just glad that you know opportunities are opening up and and happening because you know for you know it's photography you know it's hard to make a living off photography and video just art stuff in general uh you know it's it's pretty much like an independent thing like you gotta you gotta do it all yourself you know and uh a lot of us can't you know make a business and hire managers and you know social media marketers and all this stuff so <laughs> but um you know i'm a christian so praise god so yeah. um Amen. but uh so yes so 2018 started taking photography seriously uh doing more shoots um and every, everything was slow until i downloaded the tiktok app <laughs> and uh and 2019 uh, downloaded it in September of 2019, and um, that's not that long ago. Mm, no, nah, what's uh, coming up on a year uh, here? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um. So September 2019. So I was working. Um, I was actually working. Uh. A uh, at a movie theater. I had a job at a movie theater. I was, you know, I was like you know, had, uh, I was a bartender there actually. And, um, and, um, so before work, uh, I posted a TikTok, and some of y'all might, might have seen it, but it was like, I'm not a model, but I'm a photographer. And then it shows, it just shows like my pictures and it had the, uh, 
you know, rest in peace, Juice World song in it, uh, the the Let Me Know song, and um, so I posted that before work, went into work, and then uh, after I got off of work, I checked it, and it had it had like over a thousand likes and a couple um a couple thousand views and i was like okay you know that's pretty cool because like all my other past tiktoks get a couple hundred views and maybe 100 200 likes you know like i was you know i only had like under 100 followers like just started and um you know Wait, I real quick side question yeah. how at this point in time uh how many followers did you have on instagram uh, I just hit 3000. Yeah. See, cause I remember when I first followed you, like it wasn't, it was not anywhere near what it is now. Like I thought it was like maybe two, three, yeah. Somewhere in there. Yeah. I think I just hit 3000. Yeah. And so I went to bed and woke up and that video had over a million views and wow. had, I can't remember how many likes, um, That's insane. but you know, it had like a hundred K likes and I mean, like I, I had turned my notifications off on Instagram and TikTok. Like it was, <laughs> I mean, it was literally blowing up my, like I still have it off to this day. Like it was just blowing up my phone and, um, wow. and like the hype, like, like literally for, for like a solid week, the hype wasn't dying down. Like the views were just steadily going up and the likes were steadily going up and the followers were steadily going up. And, um, that one video brought me from like a hundred followers to 50 K followers on TikTok. Jesus. And then, um, and then from Instagram, I, I was like, I went from three K to like almost 10 K. I think like I was at like eight or nine K at the time. And I was, you know, I was freaking out. It kind of, you know, um, like it, it really, it actually like, you know, put that spark back in me. Like, like finally, you know, work's getting seen, you know, it's starting to, starting to click, you know, you know it put me more in like a, a creative mindset. So, um, so, it, um, so that video ended up getting about 3 million views when it kind of like started to die down and 700,000 likes. Jeez. And then TikTok took it down. Uh, it? What? Why'd they do that? So TikTok took it down. Um, after So two weeks of it being up, TikTok took it down because, um, see, TikTok is uh, kind of a pain in the butt because it, it doesn't tell you why. It just says that you uh, went against community guidelines. Um, it doesn't give you, like, a specific reason. So I'm guessing it's because I use a Juice World song. Um that's and it was like a, it was like an unreleased song, so I'm guessing they came after me, ah. and um, so I had to like file for a, uh, for them to like, put it back up, file a dispute or whatever for them to put it back up, and they denied it, and um, and um, so they denied it, and then six months goes by, and then I'm able to file for it again. And so I did, and they put it back up. So, yeah, you know, like they put it up the second time. Um, I don't know. I think because maybe I think the song might have been released by then. So I was able, like, was actually released by then. If you actually type in on YouTube or maybe even Google Kayla Visuals, uh, Juice World pops up. Um, like That's crazy. Yeah, because like, <clears throat> like I don't like I made like so. The, that song went, or that my sound went viral on TikTok as well. Oh, yeah. So, like, so that, people, yeah, I got you. So, that Juice World song that I used, it was like connected to my name. So, it, uh, it had over a million people use that sound. It's like 1.3 million people use that sound. So, Larry, like, Juice World and his like management team was, you know, like I was doing the work for them, you know, I was giving them like free advertisement. And, um, so like when you type in, uh, juice or Kayla visuals on YouTube, it pops up juice world songs and that's crazy. That wow. Um, but, um, 
Because I literally people will go to YouTube and say, what's the song that Caleb Visuals used yeah. in his TikTok? You know, they didn't <laughs> the song, really. Um, but yeah, so, um, so that TikTok blew up. And then I had, you know, I, I was posting a TikTok almost every day. And um, it wasn't really going anywhere. You know, it's getting a couple of thousand views, but not anything viral. Uh, and then I had um, two more TikToks back to back, actually, um, kind of blow up, and um, that helped. Um, it was just stuff related to photography. It was literally, it was this picture in the background. Uh, it was the Stranger Things photos. So cool. uh, I love Stranger that, Things. Yeah, so I just got done watching like season three of it. Last oh really? Year or whatever, and was like, you know, inspired. So, dude, uh, I binge watched all through like the first two seasons within like literally I think three days, and then the third season I watched it in one day. I, I and I don't do that with TV. Like I don't even watch TV yeah. to be honest. Like, but that show, I love that. Uh, I understand. Um, <laughs> it's a good show. It's one of my favorite shows. And so I made that picture, and it kind of um made help me. You know, I posted like that picture or, like on TikTok and stuff, like showing off my Photoshop work. Um, and it was it was that one and like another, I posted like an astronaut one um, where uh, I had a model like have an astronaut helmet on and like some, like a NASA hoodie on. And then like the sky was like space, like a galaxy. And it, um, uh, people was like loving those pictures on TikTok. So it was making, it was helping TikTok blow up because people were like liking it and commenting like, oh, like, How'd you do this? How you do that? And um, and then so those two videos blew up. And then my really my count was kind of slow until recently, until about seven days ago, eight days ago. Um, really, like I was getting like a, I was averaging a couple thousand views um, from probably like um, I don't know, like February to like eight days ago i was averaging anywhere from a couple thousand to like maybe tens of thousands of views but then um just like eight days ago i got that the spike mask and um i already already put it on went to my bathroom and like just had my phone and just like went around it and then i put my phone in it to like see see to show people how i see through it and and uh, so it's like a nine second video and it ended up getting 5 million views. And I was, I was like, it, you know, it was cool, but at the same time, it kind of pissed me off because it was like, <laughs> like you're putting was, all this hard work yeah. out for people to see. Like, yeah. Like, you know, it was literally like a nine second video. I just walked in my bathroom, did it and it blows up. So I'm like, okay, you know, I'll take it. Um, <laughs> and, um, so the last eight days, um, Last eight days, let me see. Ooh. I can go to my TikTok. Gavin, is this gonna end? I was just about to say, I don't know what, we've been on Zoom for a while yeah. now and I've never had it say this. Uh, yeah. Remaining, it's remaining time, it's given us six minutes and 30 seconds or upgrade, upgrade to pro. I'm gonna hit upgrade to pro, but I don't know why. What? What that don't make sense. Yeah, just, I we've been on Zoom for I mean months. I don't. I've never had this happen to me. I, I put the time limit on for like two hours, and we've yeah. only been in here thirty minutes, and it's telling us we have six minutes left. That ain't right. That's... Worst. Um, yeah, we're ahead, just Caleb, a new call. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Worst, worst comes to worst, we'll just have to make a new call. Um. But yeah. So last, I guess the last seven days. Um, just proving it so it sounds like I'm lying but I've done wow. 9.7 9, 9. million views yeah Crazy. on TikTok uh, and um, and literally like so seven days I've posted um, a video each day in the last seven days and it's all with masks on and they're all just blowing up like three of them are sitting over a million like couple million wow. views and some of them are like over a hundred thousand and um so now it's kind of like 
thing that I'm rolling with. It's kind of like my persona or like awesome. my alter ego. Like I people yeah. like the mysteriousness or whatever. So I feel like I don't know how much of this is like maybe it's a subcon maybe I'm just the only one thinking about it, but I feel like that was like perfect timing to do that. Yeah. I mean with all the I don't know if yeah. is that why it, you kind of it went could be. Not really or um like yeah. i don't know like even though it's more full like you're doing the full masks yeah i feel like there's like something about it that's like catchy on this yeah, yeah. yeah it's catchy it's cool because well, like half the comments are um like where do you get it but also like do a face reveal like people are like okay yeah. cool. you know people are like wondering who you know who who i am like you know yeah. it's, it's, it's even it's even as far as like you know uh, I bet he's sexy or something. Like it's, you know, <laughs> get, it's getting a little weird, you know. Yeah. And, um, I wanted to ask you that. Like, you're getting all these <laughs> views and likes if you read comments and stuff. And oh yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's you're like um, the of photography. Yeah, and it, it's like um, you know, like like people can like duet videos on TikTok, you know, mm -hmm. and so like people will duet duet them, and then like, but it's like super for, like weird stuff, like like oh i bet this guy's a freak in the bed like it's like <laughs> the weirdest stuff ever or like but uh it hasn't really been too much hate uh it's been a lot of just like questions cool. or like how or you know where you get it from and um you know that's like those nine million views um so eight days ago i was at 120k on tiktok and now i just passed 200k yesterday i saw you and post, so, yeah. so um so it's helped me gain like over eighty thousand followers and like tiktok is such a it's like a, it's a hit or miss but like you know it's such it's like one of the more organic ways to grow like tick or instagram is very like algorithm -y, you yeah. know it's like um you, you got to be doing the right stuff to you know to see a following or you know uh increase in followers and likes but tiktok you know you just post it and you know it's either a hit or miss it's kind of just luck um and like there's some things that help like poor like you know using like um popular sounds and kind of like being like being in between like not under 12 seconds and all that stuff helps but um but yeah it's helped so September 2019, Instagram had 3K, and then to present, it just hit 24K. And, like, 90% of that is TikTok. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's, that's impressive. I need to get on there. It, I mean, it's it's great. Because did, you did uh, you did work for uh, some other TikToker, Kyle. Yeah. Did you, like, uh, make merch for him? DC, that game, DC. Yeah, DC. Yeah, I I found him on TikTok and I thought he was hilarious. And then yeah. I went to uh, I went to college with him. Yeah, so it's crazy how small of a world like it really is. I mean, yeah, and with like with photography, um, I'm I need to open it back up. It's I've been working on it, but like I had like a print shop where people could like print my photos out, and TikTok was you know helping you know you're bringing traffic to that to like my print shop so um it's down right now i'm updating it but um cool. but yeah like you know if, if you can get a following like either on instagram or tiktok you can really like use that for your advantage to like you know promote your work or something like that like i had a um there's this company called it's, it's like solo.2 and it's like it's like a company uh, it's like a website that like helps you put all your links in on one page and then you put the main link in like your Instagram bio or TikTok bio and it's like when people click on it it takes you to like you have the option to choose from like their YouTube, uh, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. And um and so like that page emailed me the other day saying, Hey Caleb, we noticed that there's a lot of traffic coming to your website uh we want to upgrade you for free to the wow. pro plan uh, so nice. you have more tools and you can handle more traffic i'm like oh, okay cool Sweet. <laughs> so, 
I didn't even, I wasn't even checking like the analytics for it. I was just, you know, just had it in my page and it was getting, it was getting about 700 visits a day um, for the, for the past seven days. So it's like, wow. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, yeah, tick, TikTok is the, it's the way to go. It's free, you know, it's free advertisement pretty much. Yeah. And um, you can, um, you know, if you, it just takes one video to blow up and gain a decent amount of following and, you know, you're, you're chilling and, you know, TikTok actually, so you have to meet the criteria, which is uh, over a hundred K, a hundred K followers do at least a hundred K views a week, upload like a certain amount of videos in a week, like two or three videos in set in seven days and be 18 years old or older and um you can like create like a uh like a creator tiktok page where it's like these actual businesses can uh look for people um who are like qualified who made who meet those uh those standards or whatever yeah. and um like these actual like brands can like have like a list full of people That's and um and uh you know hit you up for like brand deals or ads or That's stuff cool. like that so like so like tiktok is like actually you know like putting creators kind of like first like you know giving us like opportunities which is really nice to see so yeah i know like my buddy dc does like at least he was doing stuff like that, i think for like man sports supplements He's freaking yeah. jacked, and he yeah. Really <laughs> so I remember he did a few videos for that some of their stuff, and that's really yeah. Cool. I, I didn't know they had like a whole separate list of like stuff like that that kind of categorizes. Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, it's really cool. Like it kind of just popped up out of nowhere once I guess I started kind of getting these views and stuff. It kind of like offered it to me, um, and like I've had um, like with the recent time or of me blowing up, I've had a lot of like DMS of people wanted me to like use their sounds. Uh, like they're like a, like a SoundCloud rapper or something. And they want me to like promote their sound to like pay me and stuff. But you know, I gotta, I don't, you know, I don't go for the money. I gotta see the song has to be good to begin with. Mm -hmm. And, uh, a lot of it's ass, so <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not that good. But hey, you know, and, and then like you gotta like figure out how to say no, but like you know, in a nice way, <laughs> in a nice way. Um, I just I just say like yeah, you know, I don't really don't really fit my my style, my profile, or something. Yeah, yeah. or because like some of it's just like you know, just a cuss word. Every every word is just beep 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 beep, and I'm like, yeah, you can't you know, I can't be doing that but um but yeah but like you know also saying that like all these all these views and followers and stuff also kind of put me in a in a bad place mentally for a little bit too um because um you know like like your numbers are rising and you kind of get like this high like you know awesome this is great but then you know as as all things you know come to an end so like you know my numbers went from going up to kind of just going flat and even just dropping down like losing followers uh not getting many views many likes and it kind of you know messes with you mentally like like what you know what am i doing wrong what's going on you know why is this not blowing up and um so really it it kind of just took to the point where i had to like you know, it's harsh. I still do it to this day, but uh, not worry about the, you know, not worry about numbers and likes and all that stuff. But, you know, it, you know, you still, you know, it's still hard. Uh, I still do it, but I'm get I'm gotten better with it. You know, I just kind of just go with the flow or like I'll, I'll just post a video and not, you know, just get right off the app and not check it until later tonight or something. But, um, but yeah, so it's just, that's the only thing really social that's that's the biggest problem with social media in my yeah. opinion is that stigma of like just constantly even you know not even for your sake but just in general yeah. you know instagram or twitter comparison or just like trying to read someone's tone via 
text messages almost on a social media platform. It's tough to read someone's yeah. tone. Yeah. It's a tough <laughs> way to like, <laughs> it's a tough way to like read people's perspective. Like, and then yeah. you get the likes and your likes start to fall down or you lose followers. Like that takes a toll on some people. Definitely. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And like, like kind of the, the annoying thing too about, I guess, yeah, I guess it'd be like for any, for anyone, but like, I'll say I noticed it more in like the artists of social like TikTok and Instagram is like, you know, people think the more followers you have, the better your work is than other people. And um, that's kind of a thing that's really, a really annoying. Like, um, like people, um, like even people who are like, don't have that many followers as me, like here at local in Memphis, like they're like, you know, they're like, Oh, you know, I could, I could never hang out with you or, yeah, uh, you know, something like that because, you know, you have more followers than me and that's, you know, that's never the case. Or even people who have more followers than me, like, like I have people who like want to do like collabs or something and um, they like will say, hey, let's do this, blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, and then at the very end, they'll say, I'm... Uh, blah blah on tiktok with blah blah amount of following like that's supposed to change my mind or uh or something like that and um you know like i guess really like people you know even it even happens to me like you know if your following grows and so, so does your ego and so you have to kind of you know kind of keep it keep it down and um it's really like a lot of my friends think I'm like I'm bragging or uh or something like that but really you know it's just like so new to me like like all these interactions like you know like I got I almost have like fans and stuff so like I'm like look like like this person like commented on my video like they think this or like I'm getting DMs from this or you know I, I had a couple I guess famous other TikTokers and stuff follow me and I'm like, look, this guy followed me, a girl followed me, and they're like, you know, I'm just like excited about it, not really yeah. bragging about it. But, exactly. Um, and then like I've I've been recognized in public twice, which was really weird. No uh, way. That's it. And uh, I don't I don't know. Uh we have a place called Baby Jack's Barbecue. Uh and a barbecue place here and the uh I was ordering my meal and um, the uh, lady that was like 10 the cash register was like, um, was like, don't you do photography? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, oh, I follow you on TikTok and Instagram. And I'm like, I love your stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's great. That's awesome, right? That's and awesome. and then like I had like a DM the other day saying that they, this person, it was a, it was a younger, uh, younger kid uh dm me was like hey i saw you in public and i wanted to i wanted to come to you and take a picture with you but i was too nervous and i was like i was like well you know i don't mind at all you know you should have done it you know it it, it would have been cool because i've never had you know never taken a picture with a fan or whatever yeah before. like you know it's 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 so new but you know it's, it's it can be refreshing but you have to also like you know be just you know be mentally like protected because you know yeah. that you can get you can let numbers get to you pretty easily kind of humble yourself and like check yourself and remind yourself yeah. you know that yeah there's more to and, life and you know kind of yeah and you know work. we you know we all have our own things to humble ourselves and stuff you know Definitely. um um you know um you know church and all that stuff is what humbled me and that's awesome uh man. uh you know, I'm in like a, a leadership group and disciple group and all that good stuff. So that's awesome. That that's really helped. So that's good. Um, to hear, dude. That's awesome. Oh yeah. But I got a question for you, Caleb. What's up? So you said you're a sophomore at the University of Memphis. Yes. You're thinking about are you going to finish school with kind of or. Oh, or what like or and also yeah. uh, so that to start that can be the starter and then also i would like to know uh your degree um is it helping you are you learning more like do you believe that there is benefit to it like obviously you're saying 
photography is a tough business independent, you know, kind of to start, like you yeah. really got to build your portfolio. Do you, would you say that you're definitely gaining, you know, something knowledgeable or beneficial to you as a, you know, as yourself for photography or just in general? So, um, so I guess I'll, I'll answer the second question first because it'll help yeah. me, help me <laughs> good. go into the first question. Yeah. So, um, so right now, I guess I'm taking like the low art classes. So like photography one and, um, I'm in like drawing class and all that stuff, which I am absolutely terrible at drawing. <laughs> like, like, you know, like we have to learn, like our teacher is like a professor is like, you know, draw your hand, like look at it and draw it and get like all the details and like the creases and stuff. And every, everyone's sitting there drawing it, but I'm sitting here with my hand on my paper, tracing my hand. Because, <laughs> you know, but like, you know, I can't, I can't draw worth anything. And, um, and um, so like for that stuff, like drawing and like, I'm in like, uh, it's called Foundation Studios. So it's pretty much like, uh, like painting and stuff. Okay. Um, so like that too stuff. Um actually is like a benefit like actually is completely like something completely different and new that i'm learning which is uh which is pretty nice um you know it's not you know not like changing my passion or changing anything you know i'm still right. photography for sure but it's um it it can be useful um especially like teaching me like new terms and all that stuff and um and um just maybe you know it can have uh more opportunities and stuff but but with like photography like photography one right now um my my professor was um an idiot and so uh it was a her and um she you know it was like very basic stuff so like um i was already like way you know i should be in like photography two honors or something you know like something way higher so like pretty much the, the class was pretty much useless it was just sitting around and kind of just you know like she would say like it was like you know literally like so open up photoshop hit new project drag this in here like stuff like that like very basic stuff and then yeah. like yeah Learn, learning like very basic camera terms like exposure and ISO and f-stop stuff like that and so you know it's a it's a three hour long class cool. and yeah that's how all art stuff is at least in because it's, it's a studio class so like you got to have like hands-on learning and all that stuff so it's I gotcha. usually longer than like your normal you know math and stuff but um but you know it was so 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 far, it's been pretty useless. I'm hoping I'm hoping photography too may teach me something, but in all reality, um, the best people call it YouTube University. The best way to learn is just YouTube. Yeah. With, uh, it's it's free, and you know, like like you can actually find people who have like experience in the field like like my like my professor um for photography she graduated from old miss uh uh like she has like an art degree from old miss but like she wasn't like actually a photographer who who ran a studio and who you know shot models and all that stuff you know she just she's just teaching what she learned from her professor pretty much see that's and with that kind of field, I think that's such a like flaw in the in the college system and the education system. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, don't know, I would ask teachers questions sometimes with the design programs and literally watch them Google how to do it. Like, to, yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm like, like I could have done. Like, why am I paying you fifteen? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I've I've had to like correct my, I've had to correct my professor multiple times in front of the class because she was telling every everybody like the stuff wrong to everybody and like um and like she was like you know recommending that we that like we buy 
this tool to do this. And I'm like, we well, don't, you don't need to buy that. You just got to do this to your camera and you can do it just fine. And, you know, she's like, she's like, oh yeah, well, you know, you may want to get this for the future though. And I'm like, no, like you don't, yeah. you don't need it. Like, you know, and I, I, I literally asked her, I'm like, I'm like, so like, do you do photography still? And she's like, no, I, I do mostly sculpting. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, well, like, why, why are you teaching me photography? And Crazy. And like also like because she's teaching us how to do photography the right way what there's no really right way for photography because for art in general because yeah. everyone has their own style mm -hmm. everyone has you know something unique about them so like it's like all my pictures are edgy or moody so they're darker than normal so they're underexposed so if i take my photos to my professor she's like this is wrong you're un too underexposed you need to lift the shadows up like but depending you know, but I'm, on the field that you're trying to portray that could be a hundred percent on the freaking mark like yeah exactly so it's like you know i think like at least like the photography classes shouldn't be focused on teaching us like the what the right ways like yes we should know the terms and what the right ways are but that shouldn't be the focus the focus should be like finding our theme or finding like what we like and um i agree and so you know for that you know that was like you know a big reason because in like you know like all the job opportunities that i've had have not not one single person has asked me what my education is or anything so it's like you know, the more I sit back and look at it, the more useless I see it as. Yeah. Um, you know, for you know, we'll see what photography two does. Um, this semester, I I don't know if I'm even going to go to college just with the whole COVID nineteen thing. Because uh, right now they have it as uh, right now, like our classes are not online. They're, they would still be on campus, and if, they're, if they are on campus, then we would have to wear a mask the entire time on campus and in class. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. That's that's just too much. Like, I can wear a mask for, you know, going in the store and coming out, but not for three hours straight in a classroom or something like that. So, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I say, <clears throat> like, mostly with art, uh, art in general, the best, like, best thing you can get is just being out on the field, getting like hands-on experiment, uh, uh, experiments with like, you know, actually taking photos and actually like painting and stuff, and just watching YouTube. Like, I'm I, I'm self-taught with everything I know with photo or photography, video, and Photoshop, Lightroom work. That's that was all self-taught just through watching YouTube, and um, and then like. I can like say going into college and going into like photography one, I knew everything through YouTube. Like she was teaching me all the, the college stuff, you know, the call, you know, like the criteria and stuff and lessons, uh, that a college was teaching that I learned when I was like 16 on YouTube. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is now. Like, the only thing that I could see being beneficial from college is if you want to do uh, abroad. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, That'd be cool. Uh, I know, you know, it's different from every college, I'm sure, but University of Memphis has like a program where you can like study abroad for photography in like the UK, like somewhere like in the UK, which, you know, and like you would like have like, you know, like a, a different, professor there in the UK and I think you know that could be beneficial that could be really cool but um but you know that's pretty much it yeah I would say like because I completely agree with everything that we're mm -hmm. talking about right now I like I've been trying to get more on like focusing just on the positive side of things so like every time I think about college because I feel that way like I try to either just yeah. stop thinking about it or like what I one thing too, like connections. I mean, I made a decent bit of connections. Like yeah. I at DC, like I did. I don't know. I feel like 
I feel like there are a lot of things I did learn about the programs that even though like maybe I didn't necessarily learn it all right in the classroom like I think back on I'm like if I wouldn't have gone like I probably I'm the type like where I think I wouldn't have been as motivated to sit down on YouTube by myself for a few hours a day and do it yeah. and learn it. So I think it like kind of did force me to at least like get into that a little more and start like yeah that side of it. But I don't know. Yeah. I, I, like, I pretty much wholeheartedly agree though that like there's yeah, some like, that need to change with the college system. Like there's like for sure, but like there's some things that college can offer like you know, like, it helped me, like, be disciplined and organized, and, you know, like, yeah. um, like, stuff like that, and kind of, like, helped me, like, help put me, like, on a schedule, you know, stuff like that, which, you know, was nice, as some of that I didn't need, but, yeah. um, and, like, and um, connections is one thing, too, um, but it's, like, especially, like, for someone like me who, like, like, I'm paying for my own college, you know it's like is it is it worth it and it's it's not like you know i'm paying it like three out of pocket it's like going into debt and then going to pay it later type of thing you know so it's like you know is it worth it to keep you know you know i'm you know i can i can make payments here and there but you know i can't keep up with it so it's like you know is it worth yeah to keep you know going like this so i don't know know, if you know if if you're financially yeah go ahead yeah like if you're financially stable or you know your parents can pay for it or something then you know i can see why you know it may be more appealing to go to it but like if you you know if you don't want to go uh or if you don't not going to see stable or you know you're going to go right to debt you know just maybe consider something else you know or even like a trade school or something um or like in Tennessee, we had Tennessee Promise, where it's uh, where you get to go to community college for free for two years, uh, and then after that, you have to uh, you have to pay if you continue to go longer. But like you know, just you get your free two years here in Tennessee, and you know you get associates and you're chilling. But um, but yeah, I don't know. You know, and then like the more the more I see, like, I, I see more people agreeing with, like, with us, like, college isn't really all that, yeah. you know, and, like, you know, even my my own mom would say it, a lot of people say, like, you're gonna, you're gonna miss the college experience, I'm like, yeah. I don't, you know, I, you know, I don't care about that, you know, like, I, I don't, I'm not no fraternity, I don't drink, I don't party, I don't do any of that, uh, and so, you know, I could care less about that stuff. You know, I'd rather, rather be making money or working or, you know, hanging out with my friends here at, you know, like in our own space. You know, I don't like being at parties or anything. You know, I feel too overwhelmed or something. So, I hear you. Too um, much going on. I, I kind of, for, for, uh, just college in general, I'm 100% like on the same page with you guys. Uh, and then you look at it like when you go to college, you're you're 18, typically around 18, 19 years old. You know, like yeah, it's crazy to think that like the next four years of your life in college is like supposed to set you up for your future for like the next 40 years of your your line of work. Well, yeah. something that I tend to struggle with personally is I don't know what I want to do for 50 years of my life. That sounds crazy. Like to me to like think deeply about it. Like, man, this is, so I got a bit, I have a degree in business management and I'm not even like, I haven't even used it. I've been out of college now a year, but like I haven't even really used my degree to the fullest and that could be on me. Sure. But it's it's like, it's very broad, but like what I'm passionate about is people and sports and like that kind of stuff so like i love sports i love human interactions so like and and when i was a freshman like my mom kind of she definitely didn't push it on me but she was like hey i think you should you know you got to do something you got to either go to college or you know try the military and like back then i was like yeah sure I'll, I'll, i'll try college like so i went to college where my older brother went to college yeah so like that's like really the only like I applied to two schools, 
two state schools and, and PA, like that's it. Yeah. Like I just did it because it was like, Oh, five years ago, that's kind of what you did. And even I can see the trend maybe going, I hope it's going down. Maybe not, but like, yeah. I just did it. Cause it felt like I was not pressured. Like I said, my parents definitely didn't pressure me into it, but they definitely kind of did at the same it's time. Like, no I mean, other options were presented other than yeah, that. and it's like I'm an 18 year old kid. I just played. I played three sports year round for the last 15 years of my life, uh, and now I'm supposed to decide on like a major and what I wanted to do. So I go to school and I'm like, maybe I want to be a cop. And I sit through a criminal justice class, got a C minus because I didn't study hard enough because I'm 18 years old and I yeah. was, got into the part you know the hanging out with friends the freedom it was my first sign of freedom and i love freedom i love living yeah on my own. i love make, being able to make decisions i love waking up and deciding what i want to do so yeah. like i went to went through criminal justice then i was like oh well i want to help people let's try social work then my advisors like, dude you're gonna make thirty eight thousand dollars a year don't 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 do that like that's not so like oh, okay yeah. well, what like what should i like what am i like so many people kind of like turn my viewpoints and like really at the end of the day here i am now five years later doing what i want to do like i like i want to fit like help people i want to you know i'm big into sports so i'm one of my passions right now is sports cards you know yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Freaking timer again dude i don't know yeah what time <laughs> well we'll try to finish it up yeah yeah but you know um, so that's just kind of my my little take on that as as we seem to all all agree yeah yeah i mean i learned or like and even at this, I learned this in college, we had this professor because um, he was very, like, I actually really liked him. He was very strict about knowing, like, he wanted us to know what we actually want to do in college with our lives. Because he was like, 80% of people in America get a degree and don't even use it after, they're, after they graduate. Yeah. And um, he was like, it's like, you actually got to know what you want to do and um, and stuff like that. And like, you know, photography, like photography has never been, um, about the money. Like, I don't even know what I'm going to be guaranteed. I don't even know, like, you know, I could be yeah. making 20,000 a year. Or I can make 200,000 a year. I really have no idea. Sure. It's just, I know I'm going to have fun with it. I know I'm not going to be exactly. stuck in like an office cube all day doing it. Dark spot too. Yeah. You just know, I'm going to be happy. And like, yes. you know, like, honestly, if you make 20,000 a year, if you're financially smart, you can make it work. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, like, like you see a lot of people who are, who like have, you know, like I'm already, like I'm 20 years old and I'm working on my credit and all that good stuff, you know, like, yeah. um, you know, like, cause I want to have good credit cause I want to be able to get uh, a car. I want to have decent, you know, decent loans and also, you know, be able to get a house and have de decent mortgage, like all that good stuff. And yep. Um, so, you know, if you just, if you set yourself up right, you don't have to worry about what money you're making. You can worry about what's making you happy, but definitely, yeah, I mean, and it, you know, it's also just from, from past experiences, like seeing what, uh, my family's gone through and stuff, like they've had terrible credit and it's, you know, came and bite them in the ass. So, you know, it's like, you know, just learning from other people or past mistakes or just stuff like that. So. Um, but yeah, college just sucks. So don't go to college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hear you. Oh man. Oh shit. Caleb, um, do you mind if I ask one quick question? Yeah. What's up? Um, if you have one of your favorite like moments that you've ever captured via photography uh, or videography, you have some really cool videos too. We haven't even gotten a chance to talk about them. I wanted to mention that guys if you're listening check him out like seriously go through his instagram and his tiktok like he's got some crazy cool videos the drone videos i love i'm a huge fan i love drones i think that's your videos of drones are so thank cool you, but anyway you. if if you have a favorite moment that you captured if you don't yeah. mind i have a i have a lot but i'll i'll give you the most recent one since you okay. mentioned the drone um the drone so my most recent video with the drone is uh in the city and it has uh it has that like a new Memphis? song yeah, it was downtown okay, Memphis. Sure. Um, uh, it had like the Chicago freestyle song by Drake, and uh, I was just flying my drone around. It was it's around sunset time. I was flying my flying my drone. I just got it. It's a brand new. It's it's the new uh, Mavic Air two, and um, 
So I, so I was flying it and um, I had it pretty high up. I was above like all the buildings and um, I guess I was flying over a building and I guess it had like a couple birds nest up there, something like that. And um, a whole bunch of birds just started flying, swarming around my drum, just flying around. And I, I, I have it recorded. Like you can see it on the drone camera, like them just flying by. And um, so cool. I had my friend with me and I'm like, I'm like, oh shoot, like I got to land it. I got to, you know, cause if it, if it hits it and it falls up the sky, like it could kill somebody. Yeah. And, um, so I'm, um, I'm, you know, I'm on top of a parking garage and I'm good. I'm a good, like, uh, I was a good, like, I think it's like 200 meters away. I don't know if that is feet or anything, but, um, so, you know, I'm pretty far away and I'm, uh, bringing the drone back to me and as i'm bringing it back to me the birds are just following it so like i'm controlling like this huge pack of birds with my drone <laughs> and That's it was pretty cool, cool. Uh, but like but like they they would they would fly away from it and then turn around and they come and just fly right beside it. like they were getting super close to it and um and i'm you know i'm flying it back and like I'm bringing it down lower and it's like at the same level as like I am like we're both like the drone is at uh eye level with me and the birds are still flying around me now and the drone and uh I landed it and turned it off and they finally just flew away but so cool. that's uh that that's one and then um I guess I'll do one more um a while ago there was this old abandoned mall in Tennessee and we went to it and it was um uh completely empty there was nobody there and so me and a couple friends were in there uh, I was getting pictures I had like a smoke bomb all that stuff it was like 2016 2017 um and um probably 2017 and um we're in there and um I saw a guy outside. He was walked past the window and disappeared. It was just some random guy. And I told my friends, I'm like, hey, there's a guy out there. And they were like, no, there's not. Like, they thought I was joking the entire time. Because I, I do jokes like that a lot. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and and they're like, they're like, no, there's not. There's not a guy. And I'm like, I swear. So we are exiting the way that we came in. So the way we came in was we found this door that was like kind of open, but we had to like pry it open to get in. So like we were trespassing 100%. It was illegal 100%, but you know, we can get the photos. So We've all done it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so this, so we had this door, um, open, um, like it's like if it closes, it locks. So we had like a, uh, like a piece of wood like in between it so it couldn't close all the way so we're walking back to the door and the door is completely closed like somebody moved the wood and we're all like what the hell's going on and so my friend he's a he's a big dude his name, his name is blake he tries to like put a shoulder in it and like you know hit it open and that and it wasn't it was kind of it was kind of opening but then closing like there was a guy on the other side holding it shut and it turns out it was he he screams i got y'all now and when he said that we all took off running and the mall is huge so like <laughs> we're we're running we're jumping through like broken like the windows were already broken but like we're jumping through like like the support beams and like we're just running and uh we uh we're like kind of like in the middle and he the guy gets in his truck and he's just like circling around the whole mall now with his truck and um i don't know who he was he never said it like you know if he was like if he owned the property then we would have like came out you know like freely like okay sorry no our fault yeah. but like he was like for all we know he was just a crazy old man trying to kill us like yeah he had no idea he didn't he didn't say anything and um and so um so we're like it's like it was like a like a call of duty campaign mission like it was, just, it was crazy so like we're like hiding hiding behind this pillar and we're like all right so when he when he drives by we're gonna take off run into the woods and so he drives by 
and we take off running, but he ends up seeing us. So he turns his truck around and is like flooring it towards us. But we're able to run up a hill in time and he couldn't follow us. And then he gets out of his truck and it looks like I can't tell if he had a rifle or it, or it was a, uh, a walking cane because he's an older guy. But he had something in his arm, and uh, we don't know. We just took off running in the woods and then got in my friend's truck and left. But That's, that's crazy. It. Dude. Well, I think we're literally we're about wow. to cut out. I think we're yeah. literally about to cut out. It's like less than a minute. But yeah, that's insane. Caleb, thank you so freaking much, dude. It was I had a blast listening and chatting with you, man. Um, your photography is freaking awesome. Like Gavin said, if you guys aren't already following him, check out his page, man. Like this dude's doing some real cool stuff. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thank y'all for having me. And, um, you know, when this, when this gets posted, I'll make sure to shout it out on my Instagram and all that good stuff. Appreciate that, man, man, dude. Thank you for taking time and coming on here. Enjoy the conversation. Maybe down the road, we'll get you on here again or something. For sure. Thank y'all. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.